Hey, what's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. 2020, starting off with the first recipe, and I thought I'm gonna do something requested time and time again. And you know, here's the thing about this one. This one is not your mommy's, it's not your auntie's, it's not your uncle, it's not your daddy's. This is Uncle Chris's version of green fig pie or fig pie or green banana pie. And you're gonna see why. Watch the video. Watch the video, right? <laughs> What's up, soldiers? Don't forget to click subscribe. If you've already clicked subscribe, hit that bell notification thing. I don't want to all you missing out on the new videos, man. Come on, click. And the first thing we've got to do, we've got the green cooking bananas here. Uh, they are a bit discolored, as you can see, because I am based in Canada and it's been sitting in the fridge there for about four or five days now one of the things i would recommend doing is to either wear gloves or to get some vegetable oil and rub it all over your hands because it has a sort of a sap and it may want to stain your fingers we're going to cut off the top and cut off the bottom and then maybe about a quarter of an inch i'm just going to go ahead and put a line straight down the side of the banana and when it boils when it cooks that's going to open up it's going to split open and that's where we're going to peel it from into the pot there we're going to cover that pot with water but again top bottom just as far as deep as the flesh of the banana if you notice i don't know how good you guys can see it but i only went until the white part here so we just cut the skin same with here just continue doing that and you're golden we've got 11 of them in there if you're following me on Instagram you would have seen the stories I was in Toronto at an Asian market with my dad and that's when I bought these you can get them at Asian markets at Latino stores at Caribbean stores and many of the more progressive everyday grocery stores here in North America have them as well we're gonna top that up top it up now with water put it on the stove bring it to a boil reduce it to a rolling boil and let it go for about 15 to 20 minutes until it's cooked all the way through and this is where things are going to get interesting i have my frying pan there a non-stick pan you can use whatever pan you've got on a medium flame and we're going to go in with a lovely dose of good olive oil and you need about three tablespoons of that And right away, I have here about a cup and a half of prepared salted cod. I have a recipe on how to prepare salted cod on the Food FAQ channel. I'll link it down in the description of the video. And we're just going to go in there. And all it is, it's a matter of boiling or soaking the salted cod in hot water. And the reason why we do that is to remove most of the salt and to rehydrate the salted cod or salt fish, as we say in the Caribbean. Gonna, it's going to slowly come up to temperature and start infusing that oil with that lovely salt fish taste. As soon as I can start hearing that pop sizzle kind of something going on, I'm going to turn my heat all the way down to low and I'm going to go in with some fresh ground black pepper. Now remember all the ingredients I use here today as in all my recipes, I will post it down in my description of the video and I usually post it on Caribbean Pod, the entire recipe on CaribbeanPod.com. Give that a quick stir and then it's about time to start adding additional flavors to the salt fish here now. Now all this while two things are happening in the background. The green banana or green fig is boiling away. Now I didn't salt the water for the bananas because I'm on a low sodium diet and there's a lot of remaining salt in the salted cod here. We didn't get all of it out. So be mindful of that if you want to salt the water for the banana you can certainly do that about a tablespoon of salt. Um, and my oven is preheating to 375 degrees. Now in with the first bunch of flavor and that is six cloves of garlic that I smashed. And I have here one scotch bonnet pepper seeds and everything. I like it spicy. You can control how much heat you like. You don't want any scotch bonnet in there. You maybe want a habanero. Maybe you just want something even more fiery. Add or don't add, it's totally up to you. Now I'm going to turn my heat up 
between medium and low. And we're going to go in with some scallion, some parsley, some fresh thyme, some bell pepper, and that is one bell pepper or sweet pepper as we call it in the Caribbean. And I've got here some tomato. I hope we'll see any kind of niceness going on here. I'm not trying to make a mess of the stove today, but the kitchen is already smelling wicked. And oh man, it's never smelling good. And this here is one of them kind of things, boy. This is what we call comfort food, country food, big people food. Yo, this is just niceness here in this pot here, yeah, boy. And remember, we, we, we're just getting started, you know, we're just getting started. You just want to give it a stir every 30 seconds or something and let that go for about four or five minutes we want everything to cook through we want all the flavors to be released and become one you know, it's real niceness man it's real niceness everything is nice and soft and combined so what we're going to do now is turn off the heat and set that aside as we prepare the other sort of ingredients and steps it took about 15 minutes on that rolling boil and you'll see what I'm talking about here remember that cut that we made that's the split what I'm gonna do is drain it now and allow it to cool down so we can handle them to peel them and then we're gonna slice them up thinly you know a lot of recipes call for crushing them I'm not a huge fan of crushing it we're gonna slice it up stay tuned as the banana cools down I've got about a cup and a half of old aged cheddar and I've got here about three quarter cups of Jarlsberg which I just grated. To that we're gonna add some uh, some parsley, some more of that scallion or green onion or spring onion whatever you call it and I have here a bit more of that fresh thyme and all I'm gonna do now is give that a good mix and that's going to be the sort of binding agent for the entire pie. Now remember at the start that I told you guys no apples were injured in making this pie. So for most North Americans and Europeans, when you hear the word pie, you're thinking apple and all kind of thing like that. We think in something more nice, eh, to be honest with you. And here we go. After it's cooled down, we're just going to peel back the skin like that. And that goes into the garbage. And this is what the prepared or the boiled cooking banana or green fig looks like. Next up, <clears throat> let's give my hand a quick little wipe there. We're just going to slice them up into small pieces, maybe about a quarter of an inch. And like I said, a lot of recipes, maybe your grandma, maybe your auntie, maybe whoever else, usually mash them. I'm not going to mash them because I want to layer this. And here we go, we're going to start building things now, so the sliced green banana is there. I'm going over with a tiny bit of salt. We've got here two tablespoons of melted butter. We need some more black pepper in here. And the reason why I'm using this sort of plastic black pepper mill here is because I'm fresh out of black pepper at the moment. And that is the only sort of backup I have. And then we're going to go in with three quarter of that cheese mixture. And the cheese mixture, I'm not sure if I mentioned it to you all. We have the the, cheese, the two types of cheeses in there. We've got the parsley, we've got the scallions. I think I did. Maybe I'm going to see now, who knows. And all we gotta do now is give that a good mix, but be gentle, we don't wanna break up things too much. You really want to mix this well to combine everything. Now remember I mentioned earlier, your oven should be preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever that is in Celsius. It's assembly time and I have here my baking dish, don't mind the, we got a handle there, we don't have a handle there, small thing man, 
It's all kind of nice. This have already been made in here. Got some cooking spray. Then we're gonna go in with half of the banana mixture here. Just lay it out nicely. It's a little more than half actually. I was trying to fill up all the holes and corners and stuff like that. Then on goes, I'm gonna put it in the center first and then I'm gonna work it all the way. And that is the stewed saltfish or stewed salted cod that we prepared earlier. Just gonna work it. And we want that to make its way and nice up everything because remember, there's a ton of flavor in that, right? And then it's just a matter now of topping it up with the remaining green fig. Just try to make an even or level surface because we don't want ends finishing cooking before the next, you know what I mean? And finally, we're going to top that up with the remaining cheese. Now, if you're a cheeseaholic and you want to add more cheese, that is totally understandable and relatable. But for now, I mind just doing what I have here for now, you know? Into the oven, uncovered, middle rack, 375 degrees. 40 minutes, four zero minutes. Then near the end here, I turned up the heat to my broil setting in the oven, which I believe is 550 degrees for about three minutes. That is why you're seeing these sort of dark spots on there. I wanted to get it that golden color. Um, I'm gonna allow it to cool down for about five minutes and then I'll cut into it so you can see what's really going on inside there. There's no nice way to do this, but you can see all that salted cod, all that sawfish, all that inside there. Um, first recipe, 2020. I hope you guys give this one a try. As I said, not the everyday version of green fig pie, but it's real niceness, man. Let's look at that steam tuna. Oh, good thing looking nice.